Hi there again, this is Tim from Second State. Today we're going to be deploying the Uniswap exchange protocol on the Ethereum Classic network, and we're going to be doing this uh, using the Second State build IDE. All right, so let's get into it. I've created a demonstration here. So on the Second State GitHub, uh, there's a demonstration which walks through a few steps. And what we'll do is we'll start with a bit of housekeeping here. So first of all, um, this may be useful if you've never used the build IDE. Uh, the first step is to do a bit of importing of some external third-party libraries. So if you go to this resources button, you can see that we've already pasted in the jQuery and the bootstrap here. To add additional external libraries, you just click the plus button and simply paste in the URLs. So feel free to go ahead and paste these into that area. Now the Uniswap contract source code is written in Viper. And so that's already been compiled. So we have the ABI and the bytecode available from the Uniswap smart contract section. So we've gone ahead and fetched those already for your convenience, so you don't have to worry about that. So step one in deploying Uniswap is to deploy the factory contract. Uh, if you have a look in the Uniswap uh, code base, you'll see that there's two smart contracts, one is the factory and one is the exchange. And there's a process of deploying those and linking them and we'll get to all of that in just a minute. So before we kick off with step one, let's just pop back to the build tool and have a really quick look here at the providers section. As I mentioned previously, we're going to be deploying this on the Ethereum Classic network. So if we go to the providers section here, you'll see that I've got, instead of using the default uh, blockchain, which is the second state development chain, we're actually using a a customized RPC endpoint. And this is just one that I've got working for this demonstration. So this is an Ethereum Classic RPC endpoint that we're using here. Of course, the chain ID for the Ethereum Classic uh, network is 61. And you can ignore this section here, this custom transaction gas uh, section here. You can use this when you're compiling and deploying contracts uh, using the build IDE in the contract tab. So this area here where you have your Solidity source code and you go ahead and you compile that and then you deploy that to the chain. This custom uh, transaction gas is actually very handy for that because it allows you to, to deploy contracts on like say the Ethereum testnet, Ethereum mainnet, Ethereum classic testnets and mainnet. As I mentioned a second ago, the Uniswap contracts are actually written in the Viper programming language. And so we're not actually using this contract tab or any Solidity based code. We're actually using the original Viper uh, contracts. So the next section we'll have a quick look at is this account section. When you open up the build IDE, these accounts are automatically generated for you. And as in previous videos, I've suggested that uh, because we're just using these accounts um, as they come to do contract deployments and interacting with ADAP, uh, we only need to put you know a very small amount of value into these addresses. So what I do is I just go to, um, in this case, an Ethereum Classic wallet, and just take you know a few dollars, maybe like seven dollars or ten dollars or something, and just send it to this uh, address here that's been generated for you. Okay, so let's get started with this demonstration. So step one is to deploy the Uniswap factory contract. So we've got here a couple of links. One is to the HTML and one is to the JavaScript. And I've linked to the raw versions of this for your convenience. So what you do is you just go over to here and paste these in. Okay, and you take the JavaScript from here and you just paste that in there. Okay. So I'll close down this account section to give us a bit more room. Now, with when you're working in this DAP tab, the code HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is written in here. And then when you want to deploy the DAP, so essentially you, you want to see what your end user will see when they're looking at the front end, you just click this Run button. And over on the right-hand side here, this is what the end user will see. So in our case, we just... Um, we've created a combination of HTML and JavaScript to go ahead and um, deploy these contracts and call their functions and so forth. So let's do the first one. Let's deploy the Uniswap factory. So we're calculating the gas and we give this um, the right amount of time, you know, the Ethereum classic block interval. Um, we're going to be waiting a few seconds, which is fine. And what we're looking for here is just the output of this uh, first button click which is an address of where the contract was deployed. There we go. So it's saying, please store the following address because you will need this. So we must do that. Okay, so we'll just pop that. So this is the factory 
address. So this is the Uniswap factory contract. Okay. So we'll go to the second section here. We're now going to deploy the Uniswap exchange template. And so we're simply going down to this area here and we click deploy Uniswap exchange. And as you can see again here, we're doing calculations for gas. And again, we're waiting for the standard Ethereum classic block interval, taking a few seconds at a time and we're getting results uh, instantly. So it's, there we go. Please store the following address, you will need this. So this is the Uniswap exchange template. So we've done that. All right, so all going well. Now the next thing we need to do is we actually need to link those two contracts. And this is done, uh, this is done using one of the uh, natural Uniswap uh, functions anyway. So all we do is we just go down here and click the link factory and exchange templates. And that is done for us there. We might just grab that transaction hash, put that in here as well. For future reference. Okay, so now the next section in here is we need an ERC20 token to trade. So if you have an existing ERC20 token, and you have, of course, that token's ABI and address, and as well as some ownership of those tokens, you can go ahead and skip this step and just create an exchange for that specific ERC20 token. But what we're gonna do here is we're actually going to go and create a new ERC20 token for this demonstration. So we open up, I'll just close these first. Okay, so we open up this raw HTML here and also this raw JavaScript. Okay, and again, we go and paste those into the build IDE. And grab this JavaScript. Okay, all right. And then we hit the run button again, and you'll see that this is now deploying what we've just put in. So this HTML and this JavaScript, and this says create a new ERC20 token. So we click that. And that's going ahead and doing the gas calculations again. And wow, that was quick. So an ERC20 contract deployed at that address. So we'll just pop the tokens address there. All right. Now, just one thing to be aware of, you know, obviously for demonstration purposes, we've just passed in, you know, we've statically hard coded in the uh, constructor arguments for this ERC20 token. So the details are, uh, here and if you are creating your own, of course, you'd primarily want to uh, vet the uh, source code, and secondly, you'd want to change these to an actual, you know, real life token name and symbol and amount of decimals and that sort of thing. So we'll go back to the demo. Okay, so now that we've um, created the factory contract, the exchange template, and we've linked those factory and exchange templates. We've also created an ERC20 token. The last step is to create an exchange for this specific ERC20 token. So what we do again here is we open up this HTML, just to close these guys down, and also this JavaScript here. Okay. So we're putting in the HTML into this build tool. Putting the JavaScript in as well. And we click run. Okay, so what it's saying now is to create an instance for this, we need the factory address and we also need the uh, ERC20 token address. Okay, and once we have those, the code will go ahead and create the new exchange. Uh, so let's do that. We'll go back here where we had stored the factory address. Okay, put that in there. I'm just trying to keep this demonstration as brief as possible. Obviously there's a lot more details I'm thinking of mentioning, but I'll just keep it brief at this point. Okay, so we load the factory address and then we load the token address and then we create the new exchange. So this is again, just calling the Uniswap um, functions of those contracts and the transaction has been sent waiting for confirmation. Okay, so the, the end result here is that we want to see an address for the exchange. So we're just gonna have a look here. We'll click the query factory address and this should have all gone ahead now and been included in the block. And there we have it. So the exchange is at this address. So we'll just keep that as well. 
for our convenience. So when we configure the Uniswap front end, uh, it actually requires a combination of these addresses. It's very important that you keep uh, these addresses once they've been generated. Okay, so we'll go back to this demo. So that's the end of the, the first part of this demonstration. This is the smart contract code for the Uniswap exchange protocol deployed on the Ethereum classic blockchain using the second state build tool. So the next step in this process would be to install the Uniswap front end software and then go ahead and take these addresses and pop them in there so that the end users can go ahead and uh, add liquidity and trade tokens in the Uniswap front end. So today has been all about the Viper contracts and deploying those onto the blockchain. I hope you enjoyed that and we'll talk to you again soon.